Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still laughing at the Object 268 V4 that was complaining everybody was firing high explosive at him. <laughs> He's in this battle, by the way. Sorry. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. But yeah, tanks with impenetrable armour complaining that everybody's being forced to fire high explosive at him. I'm sure it'll be happy with the changes to high explosive on the sandbox server. If that goes through to the live server, high explosive won't be able to do any damage to him either. Anyway, shall we get on with things? Today's first battle, because it's kind of short, so there are two battle clips in today's video, is courtesy of Eisenstern here. In the Swedish tier 10 heavy tank, the... <laughs> <clears throat> or however you pronounce it. <laughs> I don't know. Kranvarn? Oh, whatever. Uh, the moral of this particular clip is that it's rarely a good idea to allow a tank with virtually impenetrable turret armour and excellent gun depression armed with a 120mm autoloader to get on top of the hill here on the cliff. Man. Centurion Action 10 up ahead of him. Come on, mate. Make your mind up. Shit, or get off the pot. Are you going or not? Not. Okay, that's fine. Bounce the shot from the Unis 3. Which, by the way, is not unusual in this thing. That turret will comfortably bounce shots from the Jagdpanzer E100's 170mm gun, firing gold ammunition. How much penetration does that have? All of it! <laughs> 420 millimetres. But this tank's turret can and will bounce it. Unlike a lot of the machines in World of Tanks, because let's face it, when your game's 10 years old and you're putting a new tank in at least once every two months, you pretty much have to start making things up at some point. But this tank wasn't completely made up, it did sort of exist. A couple of mock-ups were built based on the design of the French AMX 50. Of course, the fact that this thing only really existed in mock-ups means that Wargaming don't have to worry about things like being historically accurate when it comes to the machine's characteristics. They can pretty much just make it better than the AMX 50 did, if they want to. And it is. Oh, holy shit. E75 ammo racked. Not bad at all. Now, as mentioned, this machine does have an excellent gun depression, which means that it's ideally suited for exploiting this type of position on top of a hill shooting down at enemies. One of the drawbacks of this machine, and this is something common to other tanks like the French tanks with oscillating turrets of the same design, is that big old ammunition bustle at the back of the turret, that's kill number two, restricts the amount that you can actually elevate the gun up, because what goes up at the front has to go down at the back, and with that thing sticking out at the back of the turret, there's not much space for it to go down. As a result, this tank only has 10 degrees of gun elevation. But he's on top of the hill. <laughs> he's not pointing the gun up at anything. So it really doesn't matter. It's also not that difficult to get this thing up to the top of the hill on cliff at the beginning of the match because it's only 5 kilometers per hour slower than the AMX 50D with a top speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Once you're up here, even if you expose something other than the turret that can be shot at, you are significantly harder to hit than something the size of an AMX 50B because this tank is actually very small, by heavy tank standards at least, with a comparatively small and low to the ground silhouette. The AMX 50B is left asking, am I a joke to you? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of, I'm afraid you are. So, for those of you who haven't been keeping track, that's three kills, nearly four and a half thousand damage done, and just over a thousand damage blocked. Pretty much all of it by that turret arm. It's not all good news in the crab line, of course. It only has 2,000 hit points, which is not a lot, not at tier 10, certainly not by heavy tank standards, and the whole armour is pretty mediocre, and that's being generous. The upper glacis is sloped, but you should only really count on it when it's at an auto bounce angle because it is only 90 millimeters thick now that's thick enough that it's not going to be overmatched by anything and can only be partially overmatched by the death star's 183 millimeter gun but if the death star or the shit barn is pointing its super laser at you it's probably got hash loaded so you've got all kinds of other problems anyway 
One other downside associated with this machine, and I really am struggling to find bad things to say about it at this point, is to do with the excellent gun depression, because if you do have the turret pointed down and anybody is on the same level as you, they will easily be able to overmatch your turret roof and hit your hatches. And if you're thinking, wow Jingles, if that's the worst thing you can say about this machine, you really are stretching, and yes, you're absolutely right, I am. But holy shit, look at how fast this thing is. This is a heavy tank, right? Not a medium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, technically the AMX 50B is 5 kilometers per hour faster. But when you're coming down a hill at that kind of angle, it doesn't really make much difference. Eisensturm has of course recognised that the time for sitting on top of the hill, feasting on the tears of his victims, is over. Now you're about to see something happen that proves conclusively, in my mind at least, that the world of tanks developers enjoy a good joke just as much as anybody else. Did you hear that? <laughs> Even the crew realised how ridiculous it was that a 120mm gun firing armour-piercing composite rigid ammunition with 252mm of penetration at what must be at least a thousand metres per second velocity was completely unable to punch through the side armour of an Object 705A at point-blank range. Oh, world of tanks. You so silly. <laughs> well, if nothing else, at least it categorically proves that the world of tanks developers enjoy a good laugh just as much as everybody else. And with nearly six and a half thousand damage done, Eisensturm is very graciously allowing the rest of his team to clean up the tank destroyers camping at the back of the map. And that, by the way, six and a half thousand damage? Not even an ace tanker badge in this machine. Still, I did warn you that it was going to be over kind of quickly, and it was, but not nearly as quickly as what you're about to see. Our next battle, which is a tier 8 battle on the Himmelsdorf map, was submitted by William209. Although we're not going to be watching it from his perspective, he's in a 3 tank Cromwell B platoon, tier 6 mediums, this is a tier 8 battle, on Himmelsdorf. Machines that are quick, but extremely badly armoured, and therefore tend to prefer maps where there's some kind of concealment, as opposed to Himmelsdorf, where there isn't any. Now, as mentioned, William did send this replay in. He actually sent in two of them, and we're watching the battle unfold from the perspective of the other replay, which belongs to his platoon mate, Archie Fox, also in a Cromwell B. Now, fair warning, this battle's going to be over even faster than the previous one, which is why you're watching two replays rather than just the usual one. So I'm just warning you, you know, if you blink you might miss something important. Is this becoming a thing in World of Tanks recently though? Because I have been noticing that battles tend to be over a lot faster than we're used to. I mean, most battles never lasted the full 15 minutes anyway. But it was not unusual to see a battle that lasted 12 minutes, and the average duration of a World of Tanks battle was 8 minutes. But I'm kind of struggling to find a World of Tanks replay that lasts 8 minutes. Oh, here comes the first entrant in the Suicide Lottery, and his chances are looking pretty damn good. He came over the top of the hill, saw a whole bunch of enemy tanks, and his plan to get out of that was not to turn around and run away, but was to drive even further into even more enemy tanks. And the surprising thing about that is that he did all of that without any backup. <laughs> well, no backup that was capable of making it appear in time. Guys, just because you have a machine that can make it somewhere faster than anybody else on your team doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good idea to do so. It used to be the Hellcats that were mostly guilty of that sort of thing, wasn't it? With the old, hey, look at me, I can do 60 kilometers per hour. Well, yeah, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for the Hellcats, there are lots and lots of new sheriffs in town these days, and they're all in armored cars. That doesn't mean that the Hellcats haven't given up trying, though. The Super Hellcat on William and Archie Fox's team has at least earned the distinction of not being the first, at least being the second one to die. I'm going to pause proceedings here and just take a moment to point something out. We're now nearly two minutes into the battle, and so far each team has only suffered one casualty. If this sort of thing was to continue, this battle would have all the hallmarks of lasting the full 15 minutes. Yep, two minutes in, still 28 tanks alive. Let's go. You can probably guess what's going to happen. Well, you don't even have to guess, you can just look at the bottom of the screen and see exactly how much of this video remains to be watched. 
Spoiler alert, not a lot. <laughs> You know when all the old World of Tanks fogies go on and on and on about the glory days of the Type 59 Hunter Killer Wolf Packs, when Tier 8 battles were dominated by hordes of Type 59s that just naturally seemed to group up together and rove around the battlefield feasting on the tiers of their enemies? This is a bit like that. It's not as bad as it was when it was Type 59s, because they actually have armour, but this is kind of what it was like. Two and a half minutes into the game. One of them's going for the arty. Arty Fox is going to finish off this tank destroyer. Which shouldn't be too difficult. It's been exactly one minute since I said, note that both teams have only suffered one casualty each. This guy isn't even looking in the right direction. <laughs> Situational awareness of a particularly slow potato. He's going to get the ELC. Akazuki, what do you think of this team? Really? I think you're being a bit generous. <laughs> Akazuki doesn't think too much of that team. Two of them left. I don't fancy the VK's chances. Yeah, and we're done precisely 1 minute and 42 seconds after I pointed out that both teams had only suffered one casualty and we're done. And the heavy lifting wasn't done by any of the tier 8s. Archie Fox here, completely dominating a tier 8 battle in his tier 6 Cromwell B on the Himmelsdorf map, a map which is definitely not best suited for the tank he was driving, and doing it without any gold ammo and instead just relying on the age-old and yet increasingly unpopular tactic of just being good and using teamwork. Teamwork provided at no extra charge by the rest of the team in general, and his platoon mates, including William209, who actually submitted the replay in particular. Don't worry, Wargaming have not yet figured out a way of selling you teamwork as a premium consumable. But I'm sure they're working on it, and it's probably just a matter of time. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.